It's a well-known verse to Christians. But again, as we continue, I want to focus on a few of the images of light in the Old Testament that I think really help give meaning to Jesus' words. Because light does have such great symbolic richness in the Old Testament. And so I think it's very helpful to make a few, take a few moments and to go over this. For starters, in the Old Testament, light is associated with God himself. Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? In the Old Testament, light is given as a symbol of the word of God, of the scriptures. Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Then again, Psalm 119, verse 30. The unfolding of your words gives light and imparts understanding to the simple. Light is a symbol of goodness and righteousness. This goes back to creation. God saw that the light was good. Light is also seen as goodness in contrast to darkness. In the Bible, light is good, darkness is bad. Proverbs 4.19 says, The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. Darkness in the Old Testament is seen as apocalyptic judgment and God withdrawing his presence from his people. Isaiah chapter 13, verses 9 and 10. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel with wrath and fierce anger to make the land a desolation and to destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of the heavens and their constellations will not give their light, the sun will be dark at its rising, and the moon will not shed its light. In the Old Testament, there is significant links between light and the temple. As we've said umpteen times in our study of John, the temple represents the presence of God with his people, and the temple was a place of light. That even goes to the design of the temple. The temple was built facing the east towards the sunrise. Lamps were prominent in the temple. Exodus 25, verse 37 says, You shall make seven lamps for it, and the lamps shall be set up as, so as to give light on the space in front of it. At our church, when no one is here, we turn the lights off. But in the temple, the lights were meant to continually burn. Leviticus chapter 24, verses 1 and 2. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the people of Israel to bring your pure oil from beaten olives for the lamp, that a light may be kept burning regularly. ESV says regularly. Most other English translations say that a light may be kept burning continually. They kept light burning in the temple. It's a symbol of God's light. Light is a symbol of glory in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 9 talks of the light which the Lord brings. It's a picture of final triumph. The sun shall be no more your light by day. Nor for brightness shall the moon give you light. But the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. This same idea is picked up in the Bible's final chapter, Revelation 22. Talks of how there is no need for sun or moon in the new heavens or the new earth. Because God's glory itself is the light of heaven. Revelation 22 verse 5. And night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the glory of God will be their light. So let's tie all this together. You have light associated with God, with his word, with his righteousness, with the temple, and with the divine glory. And we see all of these themes in the opening chapter of John's gospel. Jesus is all of those things. Light is associated with God. Jesus himself is God. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Same text. Jesus is the Word who was in the beginning, who was and is God. 
John 1.14 says that the Word became flesh, that Jesus is the true Word of God. I talked about light and righteousness. We see the connection of Jesus and his righteousness in John 1, verses 4 and 5. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness of a sinful world. And Jesus is also the temple. Same passage. John chapter 1, verse 14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And as we've discussed before in our coverage of the Gospel of John, just as a reminder that the word for dwelt in verse 14 in Greek literally means tabernacled or pitched a tent among us. And so it has this much deeper meaning than that Jesus simply came into the world but what it's saying is that Jesus is God who took on flesh in order to be the literal tabernacle, the literal temple, the literal presence of God in the world. Lastly, Jesus himself is the divine glory. Same verse, John 1, verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father full of grace and truth. Man is not glorious, but Jesus is. Jesus displays his glory during his ministry and makes known the glory of God. Jesus enables us to come before God and to be reconciled to God. Jesus is God. He is the word of God who displays the righteousness of God. And he is the temple of God who displays the glory of God. We also see light in the Old Testament associated with the Messiah and his coming into the world. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. In the Gospel of Matthew, at the beginning of his ministry, Jesus will use this verse and apply it to himself and to his ministry. That he is the great light who has come into the, to a dark world. And it is because Jesus is all of this and more that he could stand up at the temple in Jerusalem and proclaim, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 